in the church. And, and a lot of people are really excited about it. And then some traditional pastors still are scratching their head and not knowing what to do with that or where, yeah. where, to, where to categorize that or what, what, where, where to put that. And um, I, let, let me ask you, first of all, where, where, why, why do you believe that the, the next generation uh, is, is, uh, is so engaged with you and that, that you're, you're so cross-generational? The Bible talks about the kingdom of God, the dominion of God being from generation to generation. And one of the things we've been talking about in this conference is the, 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 the tension of transition in those in-between places as, as you're connecting from, from, from one generation, connecting to a new generation. As, as you're moving from an old wineskin that was, was great during that time back then, and we're not dissing the pioneers, we love the pioneers that have sacrificed and gone before us, but while we honor and we respect the past, we ain't gonna live in the past. We can't live in the past because there's an emerging future that's breaking forth. But sometimes there's, 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 there's only a remnant at first that begins to see that emerging future. Those who, who put on Issachar glasses and have understanding of the times and, and, and know what Israel, know what the church needs to do to successfully navigate those times. So how are you able to bridge those generations? How are you able to, to still be very relevant and, and, and uh, you know, connecting to that old school generation, but also a whole new generation of millennials and even Gen Z, that's the post-millennials that are coming up. What, what is that about your ministry, your anointing, your gift, your creativity, your innovation? Yeah, first of all, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me again last night. It was incredible. This whole epic event is, it has been an honor uh, to be here. So thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it very much. And thank you all for having me as well. Um, I think uh, I think the energy is what uh, what links me to the younger generation uh, and my, my generation as well, the energy. And I think the older generation appreciates the energy as well. Um, that's supernatural. And it's, I just can't sit still. I don't, you know, I don't know what it is, but it's the, to me, it's the joy of the Lord. Some people, it's ADD. So, <laughs> I just can't. You must have a Red Bull metabolism. Never read. Never read. <laughs> uh, Red Bull metabolism. That's, that's, that's great. Uh, I, I think, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the energy really, really uh, uh, links me to the generation. They love the energy. They love all of that. But I want to, uh, I'm committed to the substance. I'm committed to substance. Even in my song, it's cool. Well, you still preaching was substance last night. Amen. Amen. Incredible substance. Even it was the my, word, straight up. Amen. Amen. And I try to even implement that in, in songs. Uh, I know even the energy of the songs, if you just strip it down and just look at the words, you'll get the substance of it. So I, I, I try to be wise in that I know I have the ear of the next generation, but I, I, I have the wisdom of the generation before me. And I'm not as young as people think. Uh, I grew up in church. My dad and my grandparents were, my grandma was a pastor when I first came into consciousness. It was my grandmother as a pastor. My dad was on the organ, rocking the organ. My uncle, Uncle Trid, was on the drums. Uh, and then my dad took over the church. I started playing, you know, the, the keyboard and the organ and stuff like that. But back then, you couldn't play until you spoke in tongues. Unless you speak in tongues. So every Sunday, I was the most talented in the small church. So, you know, I was the most talented person in the church, but I couldn't play unless I spoke. So I was tearing it every Sunday. I wanted to be saved, not to go to heaven, but to play the organ. So, <laughs> heaven was just a consequence of, uh, you know. So, uh, so that was like for 20 years that that was me at the church building, the church building, the church choir, uh, doing little things like that. And then for 20 years, I had the music industry. And now in my 40s, I'm 43 now. So now I started the church at 40. So we're three years old now. And so people are like, you're 40? Yeah, but I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to gain weight. It's not working. <laughs> Eating pasta and going right to sleep is not sticking out. Let's keep on living. <laughs> Get up in them, them higher 40s. You're going to you gonna wake up chubby. <laughs> I'm waiting for those days. So I think the image and how I look and how I dress and how I present myself yeah. connects with yeah. the generation, uh, you know, the, the next generation. I love it. I just like being fly. I like being, you know, I, I like dressing cool. I don't know. I don't know. That's just me. Uh, I'm into fashion. I'm into all of that stuff. And I think that all can be used to the glory of God. The Queen of Sheba even recognized Solomon's men's apparel. 
You know what I mean? Like, look at how they're dressed. It was just a level of excellence and reverence that, that, that relevance that even, you know, kings and queens uh, admire and recognize. So I think that's very important as well. I think we should take care of our spirit. We should take care of our bodies. And we should care how we look and how we present because that's a level of excellence that the kingdom should have that gets favor from people who may not believe the same God you do. Temple management. Temple management. And that's really, really engaging the culture. Exactly. Uh, because sometimes the church is so, so, you know, caught up in the four walls of the church building, and they think that, well, let's get our hands dirty if we're out there in the culture. But Jesus didn't say, go into all the church and preach the gospel. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Yeah, and I think in our attempt to be holy, our attempt to be separated uh, and to come out from among them, I think we, 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 lose it in that space. Like we, we think we're pleasing God by not doing anything uh, uh, like the world. But I think our challenge and where the church needs to move, I heard you say that a little earlier, I think we need to understand that we we get it, we're not of the world. We get it. That's being holy. We're not of the world. My kingdom is not of this world, Jesus said. Got it. But I don't think we understand that we're in it. <laughs> he says be in the world but not of it. So what does it mean to be in the world but not of the world? What does it mean to be wise as a serpent? You understand what I'm saying? Good. Why would you say that? So I think we have to not be afraid to tap into world resources, you know what I mean, and bring glory to God through it, whether it's clothes, fashion, technology. We cannot we cannot grow estranged from technology as it continues to grow. Oh, that's Snapchat, that's for the kids. Oh, Instagram, Facebook, that's all for the, everything is not for the kids. It's the next world movement. Yeah, right. Technology oh, is the next world movement. Yeah. And I don't want the church to be left uh, trying to be holy that we miss how the world mm. communicates. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think we need to embrace things like that to the glory of God. Yes, there's a lot of ratchetness on social media, but there could be a lot of righteousness if we put our hands to the plow. Absolutely. Put your hands together. Amen. Amen. That was fantastic. That's fantastic.